Is Easter pagan? I saw a funny meme that was going around on social media that said, keep Astarte in Easter. This is a a play on the Christmas meme, which is keep Christ in Christmas. And these are pagans or neo-pagans, Wiccans, making fun of the Catholic practice, the Christian practice of celebrating Easter in the spring. And they're pointing towards the fact that there is this legend, this myth, that originally the Christian feast of Easter has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ and has everything to do with a pagan goddess that is Astarte. If we go back to the Venerable Bede, he has a quote talking about the name of this feast, Easter, and it reads like this. Astra month, which is now interpreted as the Paschal month, was formerly named after the goddess Astra and has given its name to the festival, end quote. So what do we Catholics say about this? Are we worshiping the resurrection of Christ using a pagan goddess name? Well, not exactly. The Proto-Germanic or the ancient Anglo-Saxon term that Bede is referring to here is Eistra. And it refers to the Germanic term Ostra. And you can hear in that word Easter also means east, just like in German. So Austria is the eastern part. Australia also is to the east. And in our English term, Easter, you hear the word east. All of these Germanic and Anglo-Saxon words derive from the term to rise, spring, day spring. We say it in our term spring. And it relates to the spring equinox. All ancient people, whether they were Jewish or pagan or Christian, recognize that around March 21st, the night and the day were equal. That's why it's called the equinox. And this was a time of celebration for pagans, but also for the Jews, it marked the time of the Passover, the Passover moon. And this is how ancient Catholics computed the Paschal feast day. Uh, Just a note here, in Greek and Latin, the term for Easter is Pascha, and it relates to the Hebrew word Pesach, which means Passover. And so they computed the Christian festival as the first full moon after March 21st and the Sunday following that. So March 21st, full moon, Sunday after that. That's how we get the feast day. And it's reckoned in a way off of the Jewish way of computing Passover, but we always go for a Sunday after it. So that's how we get it. So it really has nothing to do with this pagan name any more than saying, I'm going to meet you on Thursday, which means Thor's day, that you worship Thor. Also, the goddess name, Ashtora, which we find in the Bible, this is in Isaiah 17, also in Isaiah 27, Jeremiah 17, and Micah chapter 5. All of these areas, the goddess Ashtora is condemned. It's a pagan goddess. So in all these cultures, the spring equinox was associated with the spring goddess. And so in Anglo-Saxon cultures and in German cultures, we use this term Easter, and we're not referring to the goddess, we're referring to the equinox. It's the same word, but it's not the same thing. And as Bede says, yes, there is this unfortunate connection. And I think also in English, we Catholics should start saying Pasch, Paschal, Paschal candle, Paschal celebration, all those things are are worthy and we should be doing those things. We also don't need to be afraid of using the term Easter because it is ancient and it is traditional. So all that being said, the word is the same, but that doesn't mean we worship the goddess. Like I said, if I say Thursday or Thor's day, I'm not worshiping Thor. If I say Wednesday, which is Woden's day, I'm not worshiping Woden. It's just a historical overlap. It's a historical coincidence that has nothing to do with the origin of the feast. Pascha, Easter Sunday, goes all the way back to the apostles. We hear St. Paul say, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the festival. What is the festival? It is Easter Sunday. It is the Pasch. One more thing before we go related to Easter is in the traditional Latin mass, that is before Vatican II, the priest, as you know, faces with the people or his back is towards the people and he is facing in which direction? East. We call this ad orientum. He is towards the east. This is because all ancient Christians prayed towards the east. Today, the Eastern Orthodox only build their churches 
to the east because Christ, it is believed, will come, his second coming from the east. Jesus says, as lightning goes from east to west, so shall the return of the Son of Man be. So we pray towards the east. This is part of our traditional architecture, our traditional liturgy. However, the priest in the Latin Mass, you don't see this in Novus Ordo, but in the Latin Mass, he turns around and faces the people how many times? Five times. St. Thomas Aquinas says the reason for this is that in the canonical gospels, in the Bible, Christ appears after the resurrection how many times? Five times. So this is part of the mystagogy of the traditional Latin Mass. The priest turns around five times because Christ showed himself resurrected five times in the Bible. Well, hey, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel, the Dr. Taylor Marshall channel. Put out videos usually three times every week on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at noon with a bunch of guests or sometimes just myself. And also like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I send out uh, free books and other things to all those who support me at Patreon. There's a bunch of different levels of support, and I appreciate all of you that do support this channel. It makes it possible for me to put out all of these videos along with all of these lessons. And also, if you want to learn more with me, please go to NewStThomas.com. That's the New St. Thomas Institute, where weekly we put up classes and courses on philosophy, theology, Catholic Church history, Old Testament, New Testament, all through the lens of St. Thomas Aquinas. So thanks again for watching. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said that you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Till next time, happy Easter. Christ is risen. Has anyone ever asked you to explain a Catholic topic and stumped you? St. Peter, our first Pope, once wrote this. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect. The problem is it takes years and even decades to study sacred scripture, the church fathers, magisterial documents, and councils. Most of us don't have that much time, even if we wanted to. So what if there were a way to have all of these answers prepared for us, literally at our fingertips? My name is Dr. Taylor Marshall. I'm the founder of the New St. Thomas Institute, and we have created an online library of video and audio resources answering the most common objections against our Catholic faith. As a student member of the New St. Thomas Institute, you'll have access to our short and informative lessons by searching for the topics that interest you. For example, how to explain the Crusades, how to answer the top 10 atheist objections, how to answer Mormons when they come to your front door, and how to easily and quickly explain the Eucharist, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the papacy, the sacraments, and much more. You could easily spend thousands of dollars taking classes at universities or seminaries, but our tuition is the most affordable on earth. Plus, you'll have free access to our popular certificates in Catholic philosophy, Catholic theology, Catholic apologetics, church history, and New Testament studies. So if you're struggling with a topic and you need help, we have resources and answers waiting for you. Take your faith to the next level, become confident in your Catholic faith, join the new St. Thomas Institute today.